Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Spark of Genius Flesh and Blood production. And we have a bit of a more limited focused uh, production here today. We have Zelly Bird from Team Stroop Waffles. This is the third team member we've had in the last week here. But these, these are the three that we want to bring on, obviously, the weekend at Hartford. Quite, uh, a quite good, quite a good showing. Uh, everyone seemed to get a piece of a piece of top eight in some way, shape, or form. But Ellie decided to go a step above and get top eight in the calling limited instead of didn't want to play the battle horn, so just decided to do top eight in the calling instead. And always joined by my co-creator, co-commentator, co-caster, co-creator Rob on the bottom. I say as always, but he wasn't there in the last video, so it's not really as Almost always. always. But he's here. Uh -huh. He's here in this video, and we're here to pick Ellie's brain about what to do with limited because you know RTNs are coming up. Uh, there's draft and there's CC and you know everyone's everyone's kind of always doing CC but you know limit is pretty boring too you can snack some of those uh those easy invites if you just know kind of what to look for here and who better than someone who taught to top eight a calling so <laughs> Ellie welcome back obviously you were you've been here before but um, yes it's good to be back now now we're here for your limited prowess before we were here for your CC prowess so now we got both <laughs> things both things on here so. I wanted to start with essentially what you think because you you had to play through sealed and two three drafts right because yes. you did two two day two and then with the top eight so you you had you had yes. quite a bit of both. How do you feel this limited set kind of versus the the other kind of limited sets in the past? Do you think like the the variance and the power level and the equipment and the rares and such overall? What what do you think about this limited set versus the last couple that we had to kind of deal with? Um, especially compared to the last couple, I think the big thing that stands out to me is that, um, I think it feels a lot higher complexity. I think, um, I think something that stands out to me about this format is that you actually just get punished very, very, very hard if you go in like, I'm going to draft this hero, I'm forcing this, no questions asked, I'm paying attention to no signals. Um, and then I, I, I think the actual, like, Gameplay tends to be a lot higher complexity, whereas the draft actually kind of, uh, I think beckons a little bit more of a simple-minded approach. I think some people are really overthinking it. Right, that makes sense. Definitely, I feel like the. Do you feel? Do you also feel like the addition of tokens and and cards that like activate or deactivate, like down, down but not out stuff, stuff cards mm -hmm. like that, increases the complexity about like. Theoretically, people should really only be using their armor in very specific scenarios to block on hits. And now it seems like everyone's just kind of throwing it out there to not get taken down by like a down with not out. How do you how do you feel that kind of ass of the complexity? Um I think the I think the mini game of uh playing around the down but not out, whether you're whether it's even possible for your opponent to have it in their deck or not, is kind of a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, and I, I also think it comes up a little bit that, like, you're encouraged to use a lot of the conditional temper gear as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. um, because you're just, you may just not get to turn it on again. Something I found myself doing, actually, in a lot of games um, <laughs> was just, like, blocking zero with it if I knew yeah. I wasn't going to turn it back on to get it off the board so I couldn't get juiced later on. That's fair. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely a weird thing I didn't think would be... Last thing I would think about this set is like, oh, use your armor now before you just get crushed for owning it. <laughs> um, the, la the last general kind of point, how do you feel about Wage and Clash? These are kind of the new keywords. Uh, did it like, did you enjoy it throughout the day? How well did like either of them, did you like build toward them or like keep them in mind? Or, or what was kind of your approach going into the tournament? Uh, first off, I think they're bonkers. Like, like they're just super fun. Um, I know that's not necessarily the focus of competitive limited, uh, but they're, 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 they're just a blast. Yeah. yeah, they're they're a blast. It's it's super duper cool to like play the head game of like the wager of like maybe I want this to hit, maybe I just want you to interact with me, maybe, and I don't mind giving you the token. And then Clash is very much just like it's it's pretty high variance. It's like inherently a mm -hmm. high variance mechanic, but I think it's I think it's kind of a healthy kind of variance where you can actually. You can build your deck in ways to, uh, you know, you you can you can build your deck even in a limited format to improve your chances on a clash. Certain heroes are better at it than others. Yeah. Um, Do you think it makes it more RNG focused of a format where it's like, if I don't hit any of my clashes, I just lose the game. 
or did you feel that way or is it more just you know very back and forth and it didn't matter a whole lot i think a lot of that tends to be on you for drafting too many clash cards okay. i think that was something that i came up that was something I, I i came to the conclusion of is i think drafting too many clash cards is actually just incredibly greedy mm-hmm. um and it's i think i had this conversation with uh with my partner yuki a couple times we had this realization pretty early on that it was like hmm Losing a lot of clashes is a really miserable way to lose a game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you, you have to you have to kind of pick and choose uh, your fights on whether you want, you know, three clashes in your deck or seven. Um, mm-hmm. And you kind of have to accept the consequences that come with having seven in your deck. That's fair. Yeah, some of those cards are like insanely powerful, like the rare clashes and such. Block like block fours. And it's 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 easy to kind of just get enamored by the number, but then just keep losing clashes and your opponent getting. S- super value um yeah absolutely and test of strength is even a common yeah there are going to be at least like three or four usually test of strengths running around um just just in, just in the pod so it's just kind of kind of nice to have that option but there's so much like overpower and stuff in the set whereas block cards definitely help you out quite a bit the the first thing i wanted to like touch on was kind of a obviously going forward draft is for the rest of heavy hitters meta draft is going to be kind of the name of the game as the limited callings are done however power cards or like cards to build around i think is synonymous for sealed and draft that's kind of where i want to start and i know in this set there are definitely some cards where if you see it in your pool it's equivalent to like seeing it pack one pick one it's like either build yeah. around or you choose your hero so i wanted to talk about those first are there any any of those cards you kind of drafted on the day that you were just like, yes, I'm going to build either in draft or seal. I'm going to build around this. And that's just going to have to be the strongest deck because this card is just like way more powerful than everything else. Mm-hmm. Um, sealed to start there. Um, my, my my Betsy list that I had in sealed that went seven and one had a primed to fight. And I think mm-hmm. I... <laughs> I think every single game came down to that card. That card is completely insane. You just, like, mm. set up a two-card 11, and your opponent probably just loses the game to it because it's just so much value to get out of a single turn cycle, especially if you, like, jam it at Arsenal, block six to nine, depending on the block values of the cards in your hand, and then fucking wallop you, and game kind of yeah. ends. Um, no Fear really stood out to me. I drafted... In the first draft of day two, I ended up 3 0 that pod, and my. I was already in KO, um, but I was kind of also already drafting a bit more of a defensive deck, and I think No Fear ends up being a build around, even if the order. even if the chicken kind of came before the egg there. Um, but I, I drafted No Fear pack three, pick one, and that card was nuts. It's, it's just like. <laughs> There's no defense reactions in the set for a good reason, because being able to block um, six and keep four cards and come at your opponent is uh, is yeah. is certainly worth being the theme of your entire deck, even if you only get one. Yeah, no, that that makes sense, because then you can just with with the perfect hand, you can just have like an 18 value turn if all of your all of your cards are even just coming for three. That'd be pretty insane. But uh, are are any of the specialization pieces so like any of the specialization equipment pieces how do you feel about those because i've seen kind of some of them being very strong build arounds kind of like oh a good time chapeau is just like you just just go betsy because it's just yeah that hurts crazy whereas like golden glare eh, eh, it's not really of the same kind of caliber how do you kind of feel about the differences there um well you echoed my sentiment twice there (laughs) <laughs> um which is i i think uh i think the chapeau is crazy i think golden glare is just okay but um ironhide helm you don't have to pay for being its floor is like still quite good mm-hmm. um and you you do end up with a lot of yellows in your deck so I, I think it's pretty good i just don't know if it's quite you know the 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 force this hero powerhouse that um the good time chapeau is i think the kasai hat and the olympia hat are quite similar um Mm -hmm. and that i think the olympia hat is very much like you see this you you just beeline into olympia no questions asked and i think the cast i had is kind of just an okay synergy piece Mm -hmm. um the brutes 
are pretty much exactly the same way. You have you have yeah. Monstrous Veil, which is this like just okay synergy piece, and then you have Knucklehead, which is like wow, no. okay, I'm just no. I'm, I'm I'm KO now, no questions. Mm. Yeah, no, I. It's kind of funny. Knucklehead is like KO just seems to be the um, it's always the highest percentage of like all the draft days or whatever is like clearly the strongest, and then yeah. you just get like three life off Knucklehead. It's like oh this. <laughs> This hero really need another three life, even though they had one weapon. Like I, I don't know. It just it kind of seemed odd to me, and I saw monstrous veil. I'm like, all right, there's uh, there's some favoritism going on here, but that's fine. Mm. And um, I think monstrous veil is actually quite powerful. I think when that when that thing lines up, it ends up being worth so much more than knucklehead could ever hope to be. It's true, but then you have to play Rhinar. So you do have to be Rhinar. You do have to be. You have you have to factually be Rhinar, which means. Your blue fives are no longer sixes. Your, your deck just needs to have a higher quality to like reach that mm -hmm. same pinnacle, which is you know depends depends on the draft. But I feel like for sealed, it's just like oh, it's not something I really want to have to it's be wasting. Not sealed. Yeah, like that rare slot. I wish it was like almost any other helmet other than monstrous fail. Um, so this that's... is something. Oh. Go oh. ahead. <laughs> this is something I kind of felt uh, in the format in general, um, and I, I think seal sealed really brings it to the forefront, where you have three classes, and there's two heroes in each class, um, and I think each one kind of has one hero that will very much just eat whatever slop you feed them uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to putting cards in your deck, where KO is... His hero ability is literally dedicated to... <laughs> uh, how can I make this pile of garbage a little bit uh, more effective? Um and then Reinar is this very, like, you need a very specific pool, but if you can, he's quite powerful. And obviously, Reinar is not happening in Sealed, uh, and I think the other two classes are very similar. I think um, mm. I think Victor requires a very specific deck, but Betsy can kind of be like, all right, well, I'm going to jam some three for sevens in here, and maybe I turn my hero ability on. Mm. Um, and I, I, I actually think Kasai, kind of, I think, I think there was this conception early that Kasai was the, you just jam whatever in here. Uh, deck, but I, I, I think she's kind of the one that wants a little bit more of uh, specific cards in a specific deck. Yeah, of the two yeah. warriors. Yeah, that's fair. Olympia just kind of like you wager anything. And it's just so you get gold value and be able to draw cards. Whereas Kasai, if you have no draw engine, Kasai is half a hero really. Although you get some yellows too. I mean, you get need such, such a specific mix. But I definitely do agree that there's there's kind of like the one eminent slop hero but the one yeah. uh, carefully curated uh steak tartare you know it's all it's all a matter of what what you could put in there so i i think I, well what we really want to talk about here is what a lot of people are gonna be interested in is drafting so i kind of want to know what your strategy going into day two obviously you x1 sealed and you know you're gonna do at least two drafts if not three you ended up doing three but what was your opinion kind of going into those two drafts and did it did it at all change going to the top eight draft? Um my opinion, like just what I think of the format in general. Just like your strategy. So sorry, I should say your draft strategy going in, because <laughs> obviously we're switching we're switching formats, right? So right. your your strategy going into the day two drafts and did it change compared to that and the top eight draft? Um I don't know if it necessarily changed so much going into top eight, but there were definitely a few things I wish I did different. And maybe even as much as I wish I held to my principles a little more in the top eight draft. The draft was pretty messy. Um, I think coverage said as much. I think everyone in the pod kind of agreed that they felt like that draft was pretty messy. And it's something that I've actually been feeling about the format where... Um, if you have somebody pivot once, twice in the pod, the whole pod can end up quite messy and everybody can be feeling a little bit lost. Um, I think that's maybe a good thing. I think that's mm -hmm. actually a pretty strong uh, feature of the draft format is that it's uh, volatile enough that the whole table can kind of really feel spicy. everybody else's decisions. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a little spicy. Um, but, uh, I mean, my strategy very much off the rip was like, don't overcomplicate things. Don't really sit there and like pick cards to send a signal. Don't mull over everything. Kind of just look at the cards in your pack. Take the best card for the first one, two, three, four, maybe even five picks. Um, mm -hmm. Not really worrying about the, the class or type at the bottom. And then kind of reflect on that as you start to see more packs and you've reached a point where maybe some reds are missing from the packs. Maybe there's fewer class cards. And from there, you can kind of 
if you're really feeling it, you can count class cards and then kind of go from yeah. there. I think uh, I think my first draft, my first few picks were like test of strength, pack one, pick one. And then I took like a stand ground and then I took like a bloody oval. And then I saw a red assault and battery in the pack. And I was like, well, I think I'm just going to start taking brute cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Because you see that pack one, pick four still there. Then maybe there's some other brute stuff that other people took, but I mean, shit, seven for seven for three block three is a, it's a hell of a card, you know, even if nothing else comes through. But how do you feel like the equipment? I think throughout the sets, I think equipment has had a differing kind of valuation for different people. How in general, if someone watching this doesn't is particularly maybe new to heavy hitters, how, what would you tell them about picking equipment? Should they like prioritize certain pieces early or should they be like worried about like not getting any equipment at all? How kind of important is equipment during the drafting games themselves? Uh, what, what would you, what would you say about equipment? I think equipment is one of the most important things you can be taking. I think that's a pretty common sentiment of the format right now. Um, I think it's, you only get so many picks. Uh, you're probably going to light some amount on fire uh, when you get your last card. If, if the draft is going maybe the way it should, your last card probably isn't something you can play. Um, and I, so I think it's kind of dangerous to waste multiple picks per slot. Um, some things I'm willing to kind of have a little bit of an equipment sideboard. I think the adversity cycle of equipment, the ones that are all conditional two blocks, tend to be pretty, uh, you know attractive especially the hat i think the hat is there are some situations where i like it more than like hood of red sand for example because just the two mm -hmm. life matters a lot um yeah. but outside of that i really try to kind of kind of fill a slot and leave that slot filled and unless you know i see something where literally the only card that i like could play out of the entire pack is another piece of equipment i'll probably start passing on equipment in that slot but i still mm -hmm. think it's pretty important i think you kind of want to pick and choose your moments wait for pretty premium equipment in a given slot take that and then try not to waste too many picks on it that makes sense are there any kind of strong pieces you would recommend just base power level cards like I like flat trackers. I've heard everyone mm -hmm. really loves flat trackers. Any other kind of pieces of equipment? If you see this like early, you just pick it and be like, oh, I should probably consider using this and being in this class. Uh, flat trackers, flat trackers, and also flat trackers. <laughs> ah, yes. um, on demand action points are just so crazy in this format. Uh, something else that really stood out to me was the Guardian Warrior chest, uh, Vigor Girth. Vigor Girth, yeah. <laughs> Vigor Girth with the funny name. Um, <laughs> it's just kind of it's um it's kind of always worth one uh, especially if you're a warrior um whereas the gauntlet of might you can kind of pop it and then end up being forced to block and flat trackers can very much be the same thing uh mm -hmm. vigor girth has kind of the unique property of if you are kasai or olympia you can always convert it you can crack it you can be forced to block with your entire hand and you can still kind of get in with a saber for two and i think that uh really elevates it Mm -hmm. uh when it comes to like running it over other options in the same slot yeah that's that's a pretty good point just being able to convert that value into a source swing because i know i see a lot of people they like crack the you know gauntlet and flat trackers and be like oh okay my raw meat is on or yep. whatever but then they just get forced <laughs> to block with raw meat and your entire hand and you waste both the like you don't have vigor at all in that case it's like both of those equipment uh pieces were kind of uh tarnished there but I definitely do like the the vigor in warriors specifically, and I actually I actually tend to like uh, might quite a bit for guardian just because of concussed. Uh, uh, what's it called? Stand authority? No, something with authority. The command like authority. The command like does command authority concuss with like the might? You just put one in the arsenal, keep a blue, and come in for like the seven on hit. I feel like yep. there's like different um, different scenarios that come up way more on one of the hybrid classes on the set. I don't know if that's something you kind yeah. of felt, but you kind of mentioned it. Um, even, yeah, I just, flat, flat trackers is obviously always good, but like for those other pieces, uh, it, it's definitely a little bit more specific. So are there, are there any scenarios that you kind of had in your drafts where you had some, uh, 
a little uh, a little bit of regrets. I know you talked kind of talked about your final draft where you were just like, oh, I said I was going to pick a couple of these cards and stay more open. It's like now nah, I forced on this one card and regret it completely. Or is that any any of those kind of scenarios or something like that? Um, I think something you can get in a lot of trouble for in this format, and I think it's what happened to me and maybe a couple others in that top eight pod, is trying to stay open a little too long. The hybrid cards are very, very, very attractive. Uh, wage Agility, Wage Might, Wage Vigor, all of those are just like incredible cards, uh, but they do block two, which makes them a touch less valuable than maybe some cards in your class that you could be taking over them. And if you aren't taking them you can kind of end up in a situation where you're passing powerful even if they're just like a blue block three uh not necessarily a red three for seven um but if you can like pass a blue block three and you're in guardian or you think you're in guardian and you're taking these hybrid cards and somebody sees a pack with a blue thunk in it and they're like oh shit sick I'm Guardian now, and then you just get caught for the rest of the draft. I think you have to... St staying open a little too long will start to uh, get you punished a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a sweet spot, because the hybrid just kind of... You get... Each pack gets, what, three common hybrids? Like, one of each kind of... Yep. One of each flavor. Uh, and at least through the drafts that I've seen, people just definitely prioritizing the red three for sevens is just like that... Um, that that break point that kind of thing but as you kind of said they they do all block for two and they're not cheap like if you don't have a blue in one of these hands they're actually a big liability because they can't then you can't even block with them right as you kind of yeah. said the class cards are good on everything you block with them you don't block with them it doesn't really matter right um that so that definitely makes sense was and this is this is kind of the 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 the, the piece that is a little bit more contentious, but do you think there's just like a specific hero or set of heroes that you just think overall overall are usually the seats you want to be in with less of that hero? As in, if there's two... So if, if a pot is 4-2-2 two, two, and there's two of two different classes, which one do you want to be in, I guess? Do you want to be one of those two brutes would you rather want to be one of those two guardians, one of those two warriors? Do you have any opinions on kind of where you'd like to be if you found that lane? Not necessarily, just that I would want to be one of the two ofs. I think okay. I think a lot of people were under the impression that uh, Brute was very much the... I just want to be Brute. I want to be... I want, I want to force Brute. If I'm the two of Brute, great. You know, if I take Brute no matter what, I just want to be there. Um... But I think the more drafts I see, especially uh, today in Liverpool, their top eight was like quite diverse from what I understand. I think it was two Warriors, three Guardians, three Brutes, and then I think there is even still. Um, I think you generally obviously want to be one of the two ofs, but I think kind of any yeah. of the classes can take it down if you draft correctly and kind of navigate into the seat you're probably supposed to be in. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, that, that I think that was a Warriors final. So the the two the two of Warriors just met each yep. other in the finals. So it kind of it kind of echoes that exactly what ended up happening. Um, very very. Uh, Rob, did, did you have any uh, questions you'd like to ask uh, Ellie of uh, this limited <laughs> before I ask my final one? No, that's fine. Go ahead. Uh, okay, the last one is going to be from both me and Rob. Okay. <laughs> it's like when you give a present to like your family member and like you have no idea what it's in. But <laughs> the, they these, every these, so these socks are for both of us. It's yeah, signed. Right. It's signed. The combined Christmas yeah, birthday right. present because <laughs> you were yeah. born on December twenty seventh. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Um. I I want to kind of know that I, I think the, one of the most important things is having an idea of what is powerful for any particular hero as like must have nice to have um or kind of it's like relative strength without any context just powerful card we're not gonna go through every contextual scenario and be like oh this was your pack one right this right like that's impossible but i think there are like probably a group of a couple cards for each hero we can probably single out just to help people understand what might be coming their way to see as strong so that's kind of the last thing i want to go over um starting with I, might, I know how much you love Guardian. Let's just start with Guardian. I okay. do love Guardian. Let's, Huge start, fan. let's let's start with Betsy. Okay, what what are what are the cards that you think if if you see a lot of these in pack one, maybe coming to your left, what are these kind of strong cards you think in Betsy? 
cards, I think, stand out to me in Betsy. Um, as far as commons go, I think uh, our good friend Conkus is... Uh, Conkus is, is that's that's, Conkus? that's a that's a card right there. Okay, I was like, our, <laughs> our good friend Conkus. Uh, I think I think this is just like almost no questions asked. The most powerful guardian common. Uh, it, it just like cards don't really block that well in this format. Um, if you're throwing a red and it's online, it's for seven, which is you know often a two card block or rather sorry a three card block, maybe a four card block. Um, and they can't just kind of opt to ignore it because you're going to rip cards from their hand anyways. Mm -hmm. um, and it often just puts them in a position where they have to give you three, maybe four cards. Even if it's That's two, fair. they kind of end up having to give you three because the option of just leaking a little bit of damage just isn't there. Mm -hmm. um, I think Commander Spect is similar, but I, actually, I somehow think the Arsenal Destruction card is like less premium. Uh, because, yeah, you don't really get to threaten the card that they've maybe tried to sit on for the entire game with Concuss. Um, but it also opens them up to maybe being a little more capable of ignoring the interaction you're trying to throw at them. Yeah, uh, exactly. from there, I think, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, what, what do you think about the auras? We're just, Rob's just scrolling down here. Maybe about big <laughs> bot, bigger than big, yeah. like how... What do you think in general? Should you like early pick them ra early rather than later? Do you only want the reds and blues? Like, how do you feel about that? I actually think the reds are the worst of them. Um, I think the blues are pretty attractive. Um, they don't necessarily block three, but they also don't turn on Centauri Saber. So they kind of, you can kind of think of them as blocking 2.5 or so. Yeah. Um, especially not turning on the engagement cards is very important. Yeah. Um, Pitching blue is always nice. Uh, you know, if, if, if you kind of, like, block down to two blues in your hand and then you just slap a big bop and pass, you're really not doing that much worse than if you blocked down to a red big bop and a blue. Um, yeah. That's fair. But the ones I think are actually the most premium of all of them is the yellows. And I actually... Mm. There, was, there was a tweet about the pack collation stuff um, and how the yellows are actually short-printed, which I found interesting but also i kind of felt like that lined up with my experiences where i was like i i just think the yellows are so 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 much better um mm. they can pay for betsy which i think is actually just an incredibly important thing if you can kind of wager something uh yellows are just as good as a blue uh, mm. in some hands and there's there's a lot of four costs in the format and when you have a four cost you're pitching two cards to it generally anyways <laughs> So yellows kind of end up a little more usable in that regard. Um, they still block two without turning on engagement cards or Centauri Saber. And then most importantly, there's still a breakpoint. So in addition to all this flexibility that they have over the reds and the blues, um, they're, they're still demanding an extra card. They're still pushing extra damage over. If you're coming in for three with a high riser and all you have backing it up is the aura, you're pretty much in just as good of a spot as if you had played out the red. Yeah, no, it's that, it's a pretty pretty fair point. Paying for Betsy, of course, is a lot more powerful than not have not paying for Betsy, especially if you have some kind of some kind of wage or or something that you really want to get good value from. Uh, any any of the kind of hybrid cards you think highly of for for Guardian? Any of the Guardian Warrior Guardian Brute cards you think really highly of compared to the ones you just mentioned? So like I don't know, Wage Warrior. Vigor, Wage Might. Uh, vigorous, wide up, uh, lead with might, and you know th those kinds of cards. Um, I found myself quite attracted to the red wind ups. They're just like nice and flexible. You can kind of convert them. Being able to convert your entire hand as a guardian is pretty important. Um, yeah. if you kind of put your put opponent in a position, say where they can cost for seven or eight. Um, where they have to give you their entire hand and just pass and you keep four cards, it's pretty important to be able to discard these cards. I think the mm -hmm. blues are a little less attractive. Um, the reds are quite sweet because you can boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew, you can arsenal them, you can throw them, you can discard them. You're feeling yeah. pretty good about pretty much no matter way, uh, which way you decide to use those cards. Mm -hmm. um, I think the wagers are a little more kind of betsy only cards i think wage vigor is just okay i think seven is just a good number to be throwing in this format in general and the wagers are nice because you will often 
throw something that your opponent has to give their entire hand to if they want to shut the hit trigger down, and then they probably can't use it that well. Um, Vigor's yeah. a little less good, because they can often use that mana to swing a weapon. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Might's a little more attractive. Uh, but I actually want to talk about lead with heart in specific. Okay. Um, being a come to fight that pays for itself is pretty crazy in this format, especially one that can hit your hammer. Um, you can just have a vigor from a turn prior, and your turn your hand is just a blue and lead with heart, and you just throw a two card six, which is pretty nice for this format, and then you have a vigor going into the next turn. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, I don't, I never really think that much about lead with heart, even though the vigor does does make a lot of sense as you're able to just recycle it over and over and over again and get like one for effective four value depending on how you're using it um for victor what do you what do you, i mean obviously test of strength we see in the bottom right corner pretty big part of victor probably wouldn't touch him without two or three of those uh but do you have any kind of ideas on like the differences between the two something you might really like for victor but not so much for Vic, uh, not so much for betsy um, the Clash cards, obviously, I think you can have a higher density of them as Victor, so long as you have the gold generation to back it up. Mm -hmm. Um, I also think a few cards in Victor are maybe not things I just outright wouldn't take in Betsy, but, uh, become a lot more effective. Uh, Stonewall Impasse really stands out to me. Um, mm -hmm. you're just a lot more likely to get three life out of that card than, uh, one in Victor. Um, what else? Wage gold uh, is also yeah. fantastic. You kind of just have this, you have this snatch that has instead taken on the stat line of a raging onslaught yeah. uh, in Victor, which is very good. And then the gold will kind of set up things for you later. Mm -hmm. um, I think as well, the thunk and wallop cards, I, I like a lot more. Just 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 the clash oriented stuff in general, but I really just think like the the gold generation is mostly what stands out to me. Performance bonus is a really sweet card in Victor. I'm sure everyone's talked about it uh, at least a little bit. But just like having a head jab in a format where you're generally going one chain link wide, a head jab that says, "Hey, block this," or "I'm gonna get an extra card and I might hit you considerably harder than I was going to if you didn't block this." Mm -hmm. Uh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Warrior. What do you yes. think about Warrior? What do you think are the, the, the couple, if you could give me a couple key cards, you think, hey, I'm seeing a lot of these early. People are passing me these. Maybe I'm thinking about Warrior. Edge ahead. Just edge, edge ahead. ahead. Any color. Edge ahead. Any color. Okay, just the wager, the, 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 the wager ability for agility. Edge ahead. Blocks, one three. For, blocks for three. Costs one. Why any color? I've heard like red, sometimes blue, but why any color? Um, even the yellow is still pretty obnoxious to block. If it's a Centauri Saber for four, uh, mm -hmm. that's two cards, and then you might even be backing it up with a reaction. You know, if you have a blue edge ahead and another card, that last card could be straight up anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and very very similar to the yellow aura situation I described, where you're kind of still like shipping this break point. If you have a plus three and you come in for four it's still seven yeah um the blue obviously is a blue block three and the red is <laughs> it's red yeah. no that makes sense definitely a power card there um yeah what about the draw swords or or engage swift blade hold them any of those kinds of cards I think Engage Swift Blade is a very important glue piece. It's often not all that exciting, but it lets you create these situations where your opponent can't really profitably block anything you're doing. They'll kind of block this out and get smacked on the swing back, or they just can't block it. So I think you end up getting what you want either way. Um, mm. And I actually felt like Draw Swords was a little overrated. Um, Interesting. Okay. Why I know the card, you can kind of pitch blue into it, replace one of the two cards you used to play it, and it turns on Kasai. But I also think um, if you kind of pick this card over things that could be giving you an action point in its place, you'll often end up in situations where you have a few cards and your turn is kind of like five, you maybe have a reaction pass, and it's not very impressive. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So like the, the high cost doesn't really justify mm -hmm. cards that either one for three or give you agility or something like that to make your turn just more explosive, I guess. 
Yeah, even even if it replaces itself, you are still playing for a random card off the top of your deck as opposed to the blue you used to play it. Mm-hmm. When that could just be being pitched into a one-cost buff that you then swing your sword and it does a little bit more. That makes sense. Um, as far as the reactions, are you just grabbing as many of those pumps as you can? Not pumps. As many of the reactions as you can, or is there ones that you definitely prefer over others? Um... <clears throat> I, I think it's kind of a predictable answer, but I think Agile Engagement uh, okay. stands out over the others. I think action points are just incredibly important for Warrior in this format. And I think if you don't have enough of them, you actually just can't play Kasai. Uh, mm. Because if you can't get value out of your hero ability, your hero doesn't have a text box. And then you're in trouble. Um, yeah. That makes sense. Fatal Engagement, obviously a rare. I think the blue of that card is particularly bonkers. Two for three, right? I think. Yeah. Two for three, it's a blue yellow pummel that blocks three. Which is blue pretty yellow, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, it, really? That's true. It is it uh, that's technically correct. It is a rare, but of course it's um definitely quite nice. It's probably it's the highest uh power increase you can get, right? Two for five in red. You can't really get better than that. The set, mm-hmm. I don't think. There's nothing bigger in reactions. I don't I don't even think in the game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess not. I guess it depends on how you think of route. If you get rid of a, a three, sure. it's technically a two for six. Technically, not technically. not literally technically, but yeah. I guess overpower. Up the ante rise. is capable of going bigger, maybe I, depending yeah, on the situation. Yeah. It, it, it's true, but that that kind of that kind of makes sense. Any of the, I mean, I know you're gonna say wage agility, but any of the <laughs> other hybrid cards. <laughs> Other than Wage Agility, which is pretty obvious uh, that you kind of want in Warrior. With, like, maybe the wind-ups, Rising Speed. Um. Oh, man. I really don't like Rising Speed. <laughs> People love it. These are the, the finals that the, they're just throwing Rising Speeds at each other to, like, try to get the, the wider turns. I, I was curious. I, 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 one of them, one of the top guys, he has, like, three or four Rising Speeds in his deck. I'm like, huh. Interesting. I wasn't expecting that. I, I I might just like three blocks a little too much. Bit of a yeah. bit of a three block addict over here. That's fair. Um But I, I I just wasn't super impressed with the idea of a surging strike that you had to jump through some hoops for. Um Yeah. Nope, that's literally what this is. <laughs> it's literally what it is. Yeah. Same stat line. Uh Agile wind up again, you make agility, so I'm guessing you're a fan. I mean yep. <laughs> it's it's what you want. And especially the red, I guess you can still hit them three for seven. Like if you don't need that agility, if you have it, if you lead, like lead with speed or whatever, and don't need it, just hit them. It's like it's <laughs> sort of agile. So that that kind of makes sense. We we can finish off with brute. Um, brute is interesting because I feel like the ability to go wide with brute hands kind of definitely depends on some cards like wild ride and agility basis and wind ups just getting so much value off like KO because of the might. But as far as the, I guess we can start with the class cards. What, what kind of class cards are you looking for? Brute as being kind of the most powerful ones. Um, gee, I'm going to blow your mind. You know the why three for all, seven? Tell me why it's red solid agility. <laughs> it's true. I, um, mm, it's going to sound like I haven't put that much thought into it, but I just, I think, as I said earlier, I think, I think your approach just doesn't have to be all that complex. I think, and I think action points are super duper, super duper premium in this format. There's not that many to go around. And I think you should be picking cards that can give you action points later down the line or in the immediate, maybe higher than anything else. Um, I said this of warrior. I obviously didn't say this of guardian because they don't get agility, but I, I think the same of brute. Assault and Battery, Red and Blue, really stand out to me. Also, if you're planning on being KO, I think the yellows are quite premium. Um, yeah. had a had a deck with a lot of yellows, and 2-1 on it, because those yellows are still 7s when you're KO, as long as you can keep the ball rolling. Yeah, that makes sense. How do you... What do you think about the note blocks? Do you think... Is there, like, a... To you, anyways... Is there, like, a maximum amount of, like, Bear Fangs and Wild Rhines you're comfortable uh, comfortable with running in your deck? like three i wouldn't go i wouldn't go higher than 
two or three no right. blocks in my entire deck. They get so sketchy. Um, you can often end up in these situations where you really have to block, and you have three cards that block in your hand, and the last one's a red, and you just give your opponent three cards. You have this red card that doesn't block stranded in your hand. You don't have any way to clear it because I can't pay for a claw, and then you just pass, and you're still holding this card that does nothing, and then you die. Right. That, yeah, that makes sense. Um, it's yeah. It's I, I definitely kind of echo that sentiment. It's just like the no blocks. They looked so good early because they're just so powerful, and then you're just like, yeah. What if they attack me? You know, what, yeah. what, what if the other? What if the other side comes crashing down here? So, what if I die? What What if I die? Um, any Any other cards you want to kind of highlight for brute? Pack on. That card is ah, God. Love this card. crazy. Welcome to staple. Going it's back. very easy to underestimate uh, <laughs> just how good Intimidate is in this format. I I love it. It's it's disruptive, which I think Brute doesn't really get to be. But you can kind of present your opponent this attack that's six, uh, as previously stated. Cards don't block that well in this format. So you can kind of check your opponent on, hey, do you have any three bucks in your hand? Okay, how about now? Um... And you can very much put them in a position where they just can't profitably block six, and you kind of end up punching through, or they don't get to block with the cards that they wanted to if they had to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And just completely mess their turn up without any effort at all. And even then, the card's just on rate. You're throwing mm -hmm. a yellow two for five or a red two for six, and that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. It's just, just good math. So that's just what that mm -hmm. is right there. Um... Okay, pack hunt, salt and battery. Any anything else you want to round it up? Maybe give me like one more card you think really, and don't say lead for lead for speed. I, that's something that's <laughs> something that's not lead for speed because lead for speed you can use for warrior too. Give me give me something else you really like in brute. I avoided saying lead with speed when we were talking about a warrior because I felt it was quite obvious. It is. Um, quite obvious, yes. <clears throat> beast mode really stood out to me. Uh, I liked that card a lot. If I was capable of lining up an agility with a pack hunt, or maybe, mm. like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, agility with pack hunt, or claw, go again into beast mode, a lot of things just felt like, like they flowed into it reasonably well. It's not super exciting to throw a three for six if it's not online, but it's not awful. Mm -hmm. um, and when it's online, the payout's just so massive. Yeah. I mean the plus two just finish games, especially if you like if you have intimidated, that's probably I think this mill's probably lethal if they're low enough, right? So yep. pretty good pretty good game finisher too. But uh okay. I I like that. It's a nice roundup of all the heroes for anyone hmm. looking to play these for roads. Uh I, I didn't have anything else. Rob Rob, you have anything you wanna wanna close with? Any last, last no, I thoughts? I think we did pretty well covering all the classes. Um yeah, no, nothing from me. All right, Ellie. Is there anyone you want to shout out on uh, on this video for your for your continued success at uh, <laughs> this event and any event prior or in the future? Oh man, you put me on the spot. Um, I was due. <laughs> my my lovely girlfriend Yuki Lee Bender, because you gave me a hard time for just saying my girlfriend last time. Uh. <laughs> I'm wearing a shirt of my friend's band, uh, Box Cutter. They're from Toronto. Really big fan. Oh, cool. Toronto. Um, yeah. He's awesome. been my my friend Toast uh, plays in that band. He he's fantastic, and he has actually supported me uh, for a very long time when it comes to card game stuff. So hmm. great person to shout out. Um, I don't know. My friends who are very nice and sweet to me. That's okay. You <laughs> That's know, you don't have needed. to. That's, yeah, I, mean, that's, that's, I appreciate them. Yeah, it's 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 support nonetheless. Well, Ellie, I appreciate your time coming on, giving us a bit of a a bit of a a, a very a thorough, good primer, yeah, very good, a yeah. thorough examination of <laughs> uh, kind of the ins and outs to get anyone who's kind of prepping for that RTN season or just limited draft. Like this, this set's going to be around for a couple more months. You've got to, sure. you got to get, pro get tour it format. In. It's the pro tour format. You can't hide from it. Uh, you can, unless I guess you just don't want to play in LA. Mm -hmm. I guess you can hide from it. Uh, but <laughs> you know, appreciate your time. And uh, for everyone watching, if you like this kind of content, feel free to like, comment and subscribe. And from wherever you're watching, have a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Bye for now.